Okay, so uh, today we're going to talk about um, Spencer technique for the glenohumeral joint, and we're going to be treating this uh, right glenohumeral joint. So um, I'm going to be uh, moving your arm in a variety of positions. I'm going to be treating a joint that's kind of deep in there. Let me know if anything is uncomfortable, if it hurts at all in any particular range of motion. I'll try to be uh, gentle anytime that I'm getting to any particular um, uh, area or position that's a little more uncomfortable. Is it okay if I uh, go ahead? Yes. Okay, great. All right, so Spencer technique is an articulatory type, type technique. So that is the principle uh, that we're going to follow throughout the, our initial performance of the technique. If we were to uh, perform our technique and not be able to accomplish enough improvement of range of motion using articulatory principles, we could then apply muscle energy principles to any of the ranges of motion that we're going to go through. So uh, first, in order to isolate our motion to the glenohumeral joint, we want to make sure that we are securing the scapulothoracic articulation and any kind of clavicular motion. So the way we're going to do that is we're going to take our hand and we're going to brace across the scapula and clavicle to stabilize uh, and depress that, that, uh, depress that scapula and clavicle so that we can isolate our motion to the glenohumeral joint. So our first stage is going to be extension. And in this lateral recumbent position, we would uh, bring this, uh, this arm kind of neutral along the side of the body, keep our pressure to, um, to isolate our motion to the glenohumeral joint, and then we would move it into extension only till we f start to feel motion of the scapula. And using articulatory principles, we're going to be applying kind of a low to medium velocity, uh, kind of a low amplitude, low to medium amplitude um, force right at the restricted barrier, attempting to uh, improve the motion at the restricted barrier. So that would be extension. Our next stage is going to be flexion. So for this one, we have two options. We could either maintain our contact here with our cephalad hand and then take the other arm, kind of shift our body away, and then move that glenohumeral joint into flexion. And then again, articulate right at that flexion barrier. Alternatively, we could switch our hands around um, and brace the scapula and clavicle with our, uh, what used to be our caught at hand, um, and then grab the arm here, and then induce some flexion, trying to really isolate our motion to the glenohumeral joint. Good. Now from there, we're gonna abduct the shoulder, and then move into the next stage, which is compression with circumduction. So I'm applying a longitudinal compression down into the glenohumeral joint, maintaining my stabilization, and then I'm going to start with little circles, really trying to feel motion at the glenohumeral joint, and then moving those circles a little bit bigger, and then bringing them back smaller, and then I can also go in the opposite direction, either starting big and then moving smaller or starting small and then moving big. And I really want to try to isolate my motion to the glenohumeral joint. Good. So then that's uh, with compression. Now my next stage is to do it with, with distraction. And I have uh, two options. I can either hook under the, um, the elbow here and apply a little bit of um, traction laterally and then employ my smaller circles to bigger circles, and then opposite direction. Or I can grab a little bit further down uh, the forearm, um, kind of close to the wrist, but I don't want to necessarily be on the wrist and hand, but a little bit down the forearm, and then traction laterally, small circles to big circles, and you'll need to figure out which mechanic uh, is going to work best for you. Uh, this, uh, with this motion, I feel like this puts a little bit more strain on my deltoid and tires me out a little bit, uh, a little bit quicker. Okay, so now next stage, we're going to move into abduction, still maintaining our contact and naturally coming back into that abduction position and just moving to our abduction barrier which for our patient is right here. 
and then just gently articulating through that barrier. Good. Now a natural transition to our next uh, stage is going to be, uh, we take our hand here and kind of uh, quickly kind of drop it onto our forearm. And now that provides the counter force for us to induce uh, adduction, but also induce external rotation. And all we have to do is just push downward here. And if uh, our patient starts to slip, we could also move our forearm a little bit down to kind of catch their wrist a little bit more. That provides a little bit better fulcrum. Good. Now that we've gone from adduction uh, to external rotation, now we're gonna go into internal rotation. And here, uh, people have a, uh, quite a bit of restriction of motion, so we wanna be very gentle. And we also wanna check with our patient, is that okay? Okay. And we really don't wanna aggressively try to move past that restricted barrier. Good, now transitioning from here, we would take that arm, onto our own shoulder, and then uh, our traction with abduction stage, uh, we're going to um, take the hypothenar eminences of our hand and kind of scoop um, near the um, proximal edge of the deltoid, trying to get down to the glenohumeral joint. And we're gonna step back, and we're gonna tell our patient to relax so they, they can kind of uh, <laughs> bend with us and move with us. And we're gonna step back, which induces traction. We're gonna kind of scoop out laterally, and then because we're stepping back, we're, we're creating relative abduction at the glenohumeral joint. Good, All right, and in each of those ranges of motion, again, we could apply muscle energy principles instead, uh, but of course this demonstration was uh, primarily for articulatory principles. Uh, and then we would re return our patient to neutral and then we could retest uh, whatever ranges of motion we thought there was any kind of restriction. Okay, so I'm gonna go through uh, the glenohumeral joint uh, Spencer technique and go through all the different ranges of motion. Uh, first step, we're gonna go into extension. So we're stabilizing here at the, uh, the scapulothoracic articulation and the clavicle. And then we're gonna move into extension. Good. Good, and then we're gonna go into flexion, and I'll do this one here. Okay, and then we're gonna go into abduction compression. Backwards. And then we're going to go into traction. Good. And then from here, we're going to transition into just abduction barrier. Good. And then we're going to put our hand here on the forearm and drop into adduction and external rotation. You doing okay? Good. And then transition into internal rotation, gently, just until we start to feel motion at the scapula. Good. And then on our shoulder, and just let your arm relax right here. Perfect. And then also let your body relax. <laughs> And then you step back, scoop, traction with abduction. Good. Turn back to neutral, reassess.